it's a time-honored tradition passed down from generations. And even though we don't know what tomorrow holds, we can do our part today. To ensure the future of elk, other wildlife, their habitat, and our hunting heritage. Join today and help us ensure the future. Well, welcome to episode number 21. A little bit of the world according to Flint. Happy to welcome. He's not a country music superstar because he doesn't wear skinny jeans. I was told that years ago, but albums like Red Bandana, Vaquero, The Underdog, it's James Aaron Watson himself, the one and only <laughs> heart of Texas, Aaron Watson. Good. It's so good to see you. We, we can't go so long. I mean, not to sound like I'm an, oh, hey, we're friends. I'm name dropping. We are. But it's been, it's been too long, Aaron. It has been. It, I, you know, I, I haven't seen you since, I guess, the NFR 2019. 19. Because I missed oh. you. I was in Texas for the NFR, but I know you weren't doing much. You had, you had one little kind of show. But overall, yeah. I mean, the NFR happened and it was really good. But there wasn't near the interaction and presence as, as normal. Yeah, it wasn't as concentrated. Yeah. It's kind of spread out all over the place. It wasn't the same. Not the same, no. but it's good now to see you yeah. out and about. As we record this, as we do this, I, I, I looked, you're somewhat, somewhere in Arkansas, around Fort, Fort Smith. Smith, Arkansas. Yeah. I did. So the, it, yeah. I did the rodeo there once in Fort Smith. You did? Yeah. It's a nice town. We've been here a few times. So it's, uh, yeah, it's good to be out and about. My wife, my wife is thrilled to have <laughs> me out of the house. I know. Keeps the marriage strong. Yeah, very strong. <laughs> How's it been since you kicked back off? It, are uh, you guys everywhere? We even now things are we're getting bigger crowds. Buildings are allowing it. Uh, what are you guys doing? Is it all just do whatever you want? Yeah. Well, so you know, I was a good boy for the first five months. I stayed I know. home. You know, after. You know, when they when they kept asking us to flatten the curve the first three dozen times that went from, you know, turned into three weeks to forever. But I don't know about the end of July. I would I told I, I literally went on Facebook and Instagram and I was like, hey guys, um private shows, weddings, bar mit bar mitzvahs, quinceañeras. Um, anything backyard brand, barbecue parties brandings the it, branding brandings, on a ranch whatever anywhere i was like i'll play i was like you're literally gonna get the 2020 price tag which will not last long so get it while you're off for ass <laughs> first five callers will get a free signed aaron you know i yeah. i just i just turned on the hustle um there were a ton of little barbecue places all over Texas that just threw up stages. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like where you're from, um, in West Texas, West Texas kind of has its own rules. <laughs> like during the whole pandemic, you know, California has completely shut down. Meanwhile, in Buffalo gap, Texas, we're still passing around the communion plate at church i mean <laughs> and guess what nobody died I know, and the I kids know. are going to school and nobody died and now my wife almost killed me several dozens of times with me being home so much mm -hmm. uh so yeah you know, I can, and i know your wife and that's yeah, true that is true. that's a true story yeah you know yeah. she's she posts all those really nice things on instagram you know can't believe I got to marry this man however yeah. many years ago. Love of my oh, life. That's such I don't know how many times I've gone in there after she's posted something and I'll show her that. I'm like, what's this crap about? What do you <laughs> what is this? I go, uh, I go, you I go, you you're making all these lovey dovey comments on Instagram. I want to see that lovey dovey come to to life. Oh, she's fruition. like fruition. Oh, to fruition, fruition. It's like oh yeah. stop it just stop it i was like no you start it start it when she tells me to stop 
man, this will really piss off a woman. When she says, stop, I'll go start. <laughs> it, the, the pouty, do you do the pouty lips like that? Like, like. <laughs> so I do that to my daughter. Oh, you're so weird. I, so, dude, I do that to my daughter. When, she's, when she is being a stinker, I'll go. <laughs> and I'm telling you, it, it makes her laugh, which makes her more mad. Right, exactly. Right. Well, hey, but yeah. but your daughter and you kind of your kids kind of became stars during the oh. lockdown. I'd roll in and and see you uh, as Ned Ledoux put it. I got tired of playing to the bookcase and the garage, you know, your phone or whatever's oh. there. But you stayed hooked, man. I'll give you yeah. credit. You were Thanks, on bro. a lot and not just saying like I do. Hey, everybody, here's an update for a week. You were playing music, playing music. Yeah. Got to play, right? We had fun. I got, I had Jake learning songs, Jolie learning songs, Jack. Jack's kind of too cool for school. He's like, I'm like, Dad, Jack, you want to sing a song? He's like, no, nah, dad, I'm good. So I'm like, okay. But we just stayed busy. I mean, we, you know, we live out in the middle of nowhere. So for us, the the social distancing the quarantining that's just kind of my life anyways like i go home i don't ever drive to town i stay at home i i got things to do around the house at the ranch i stay busy yeah um but it was good you I, I appreciated the fact seriously that you took comments and requests from fans yeah not, not for me i i chimed in nothing but i do know how hard it is to watch the comments that's really hard it it's is really and, hard. And I would mess up songs um, while I was singing, trying to read comments. But, you know, one thing that it See, thank you. I oh, get a hard here for squirrel. It's squirrel. Go ahead. I, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's hard to keep your train of thought and also read. You know, one thing I've always struggled with is at my shows when I'm singing a song, if while I'm singing, if I tried to read something on somebody's shirt, shirt, yeah, it'll throw me off. I mean, there have been a few times where girls have acted inappropriately, and that's that's thrown me off too. You that that assures me. That not only do I forget the words to the song, <laughs> it makes me forget what song I was singing. Sometimes I completely forget where I'm at. What city? What, Thank what you, city, Cleveland. What my name is, and I just get I I I'm like this. <laughs> uh, I know what you. No, I don't. It's but, hard. Yeah, it, the, it's, it's difficult. But, but I did. I did send a couple comments, and I know how hard it is. But I enjoyed. Like Jake, is that the son? Yeah, that Jake. Yeah, playing? man, he's getting good, buddy. Dude, he's he, holy crap. He's getting good, and what's crazy is. I was just looking at, you know how your phone will throw up the one year, like reminder, this was one year yeah. ago today. Mm -hmm. In 12 months, Jake has gone from looking like a boy to he is a full on dude now. He has grown so much, it's crazy. Yeah, well, he, I was impressed. I was impressed with the music you guys did. And that's cool, you brought him in and you exploited your children for stardom. I, I appreciate that. I can really so, appreciate it's that. It's called, it's a, it's more that it kind of falls in that uh, child labor law. Yeah. You know, my thing is like, uh, uh, if, if you want to keep living under this roof, <laughs> you know, you're going to do this. I mean, my, I'm telling you what, my dad, oh man. There's been like it, it, it wanted it wanted uh, the boys games. I don't remember if it was Jake or Jack. They're good ball players, but they had a pretty rough game. And he went up there. One of them went up there and struck out looking. And that's a big no, no. That is a big that's a cardinal sin at my house is striking out going down that old backwards K going down looking. Uh, uh. And I was like, if you want to sleep at my house tonight, you better swing the dadgum bat. And of course my, my wife is like, oh my word, you're being too hard on them. And I'm like, lady, don't, uh, -uh we don't, 
We don't strike out looking in the Watson family. Now we'll oh, strike yeah, out yeah. swinging. We'll strike yeah. out swinging. Right. I, oh. Hey, before I came to do this, my daughters, I told you before I went on the air, are at a, a big breakaway roping. Uh-huh. And, and my youngest daughter roped her. She was fast, but she broke the barrier. No, like you said, you're slow and you break the barrier. Yeah. But she broke the barrier. And I said, hey, way to rope, though. I mean, it's, it's a shame you won't get to eat today, but whatever. So I did. I do that all the time. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Hey, uh, that, this is totally random, but that reminded me, you, me, me saying that I, I'm slow and I break the barrier. We went on, we were in Montana at this ranch with Red Steagall uh-huh. and Reba. I know okay. where you were. You were at the, uh, it was right outside of Bozeman or Cascade. Where yeah, it's Cascade. Uh, yeah. The, what's that at ranch? Mike Ingram's place. Mr. Ingram's place. Yeah. Bell Cross. Right. Yeah, that's right. Bell Cross. We were at Bell yeah. Cross. So we were doing some, we were just, we had so much fun and we were doing the, uh, Mounted shooting, right? Mm-hmm. And um, dude, when Reba does the mounted shooting, I mean, we're talking Annie Oakley. The girl is Reba's flying on that horse and just like bam, 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 bam. Rain, I mean, rains was, in her mouth like John Wayne. Oh, dude, it was like. And then I, then after she went, I felt like I was like. <laughs> Bam. Boom. Bam. And then when my <laughs> wife did it, which it was, it was the funniest thing I've ever seen. She's like this. And then she would ride right up to the <laughs> balloon target, put the gun right up to it. Bam. And then she'd ride up to the next one. Hey, stop. Bam. And I mean, I watched the sun almost go down, but I was like, one thing was for certain. You did not miss right. any of the targets. You're the best, honey. You're, You're the, the best. best. Your shooting right. accuracy was amazing. <laughs> amazing. Uh, you know, seriously, one of, through all of what we went through in the last year, it really, the benefits of social media, this stuff, look at in the last year, oh, how yeah. good Zoom has caught, gotten. It's like being face-to-face. Yeah. But the benefits of social media, you were, we, uh, uh, me too. I mean, it pushed yeah. me to start doing this. It Absolutely. keeps you engaged with the people that in essence are paying the bills. Keeps you engaged. They feel, when you went live on, on Facebook and did your yeah. music, it mm-hmm. really... If you recognize someone's comments, I've learned this, they feel like they are directly having a conversation with you. Oh, yeah. And it almost accomplishes more in some ways. Yeah, it does. It's it's a whole different, it was a great tool, great compensation for the lack of concerts. You know, we did, we like literally sold Zoom concerts, kind of like pay-per-view TV. And I bet I did 75 of them. And I mean that they, the fans kept me busy. Uh, I did all kinds of things. I did, I bought these, you know, eight by 10 hardback canvases and I would write my song lyrics on them. And, uh, and I bet I sold 800 of those last year. My hand was killing me. Perfect. But you know, you just find ways you gotta be a hustler. Yeah. And um, yeah, but the, the, the fans just helped us plow through it. Well, that's when I think of you, I think a hustler, but uh, speaking of an eight by 10, better camp, think of me as better. I thought, I thought when you thought of me, you thought of a stripper strip, well, either whatever. One. Yeah. Either one. Uh, speaking of an eight by 10 canvas, thanks for bringing that up. Cause it's been sitting in front of me. Look at what means something to me. I have an autograph picture from my friend, Aaron. And it doesn't say, oh, my friend Flint, nothing. It says, I don't know if anybody can see that, to Flick (laughs) Robitussin. That's it. Look at That's your alter ego, dude. To Flick Robitussin. One man calls me Flick Robitussin. That's a true friend. I've kept that. To Flick Robitussin. Hey, that's like one time we played this bar in Wichita Falls, Texas. I was just getting started. And, um, 
I don't know, the guy probably paid me like 500 bucks, which was probably way, 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 way too much money. And no one showed up that night and he was pissed. And he just let me have it. He said, well, I thought you could draw a crowd. No one showed up. I lost money on this show. And he just was going on and on and on. Well, when we pulled up to the venue that night before the show up on the marquee, instead of it saying Aaron Watson, it said Eric Walker. Live tonight, Eric Walker. So after this old man chews me up one side and down the other, I said, well, I think this place probably would have been packed, but my fans showed up. And instead of seeing Aaron Watson on the marquee, you guys put Eric Walker. So I bet they turned around and headed on out. And that was not true. We just <laughs> didn't have any fans. But I was so thankful that that guy put Eric Walker on the marquee because yeah. it gave me, he was like, well, I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. And I was like, place would have been sold out. Sold out. But it wouldn't have been. Well, I, I'm. when I see you next, if I remember, I'm signing you an autograph. To my Eric friend, Walker. Eric Walker, Eric I'll, Walker. Hey, I'll frame it. Uh, in, uh, I think what happened to me, you know, you, you stayed hooked. Uh, I did, I pursued some other things cause there wasn't much else going on. Yeah. It made me not, I was at the time when we shut down and they said, Hey, listen, they're saying three, four weeks and we'll be back at it in my mind. Honestly, I said, a year over a year ago, I was a little burned out. I was getting a little jaded about my work and the opportunities. I just yeah. was tired. And I went, you know what? Honestly, I didn't tell many people I could use three, four weeks off. I, I'm yeah. getting, I'm getting a bad attitude. I think yeah. all of this, then we sat, it made me not so jaded about my job. I hate getting jaded about my opportunities. Yeah. And I fear, I fear that sometimes musicians, cause I love music so much that I watch them and go, I hope they love what they're doing, what you as a yeah. musician is doing, as much as I love listening to music. Yeah. Do you ever fear that will happen with music? That you'll just, oh, gosh. Yeah, you know, I think, I think one thing it showed you is just like, it's okay to take some time off. And, but, you know, I think that's one reason why I've never, ever signed a record deal. I've always stayed independent because I want that creative control. All okay. the guys, I'm gonna tell you what, every guy that signs a record deal, every one of them says that they have creative control. Whatever, sounds great. If that's so, then how come, you know, every time you see an, given give, a guy signs a record deal, 90 something percent of them, they first record, they look like a cowboy. Next and one then, in there. Before you know it, they look like Justin Timberlake in cowboy boots before yeah. it's all said and done. Okay, it's okay, stop just for a sec because I, I actually on this piece of paper, I want you for the layperson, even myself. So okay. you say when you sign a record deal, but you have records. Yes. So I want you to explain and define the difference between signing a a, a deal with a major record label and yeah. being an independent artist. Explain that difference in more detail. I think it's interesting. Yeah. So for me, in the beginning of my career, there wasn't an opportunity at all. They, the, the major record labels had no interest in me. I was actually okay. told I wasn't good enough. So I decided to just take destiny in my own hands and just work hard and make my own records. When you sign a record when you sign a record deal with a major label, there's a lot of perks that go along with that. You're, 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 you're becoming part of their machine, part of their team. You benefit from all the other artists around you. Mm -hmm. You're ex you have so many more assets to work with. You have funds, resources, marketing, studios, yeah. marketing, the biggest thing, is that the major labels have complete absolute control over mainstream radio there you go and the award shows sure i mean it's like with the underdog album 
that is when, when I say I'm independent, I'm independent. That means I wrote those songs. I chose the songs for the record. I produced those songs. I paid for that studio out of my pocket. Me and my people, we set up the album release schedule. We did everything. I didn't have people doing all this for me. And, 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 and because I'm not part of the system, there were some struggles there. Because when you think about it, The Underdog was the first independent album in the history of country music to chart number one on Billboard. You bet. You bet. But it did not even get recognized by the mainstream music industry because that is kind of, well, I'm an outsider. It's like, whoa, 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 time out. I mean, it wasn't even, you would think that when a record charts number one and it does something that it's never done before, you would think that it would at least get some nominations for something. Sure. They didn't even recognize us. Then we come out with the Vaquero record, which actually sold almost twice as many records as the underdog and was the top selling record when it came out. I think it was like one of the top 10 most successful releases the year it came out. It had two top 40 songs, a top 10 song, no recognition. Nothing. And that's because, and, and I, I don't have, in, in no way do I have sour grapes. Like I'm so blessed. And I understand that I, I knew that by staying independent that that would be some of the sacrifices that I would make because the labels control radio. And, and, you know, since then, since we had that success, we've kind of been ousted from mainstream radio. Um, and, and I've had buddies that are in, I have buddies that are program directors at major radio stations tell me that they have been told from corporate that they can't play me because I'm an independent artist. And let me explain it to you. It's okay. simple and I understand it. It's like, there's only so many songs that can be played in a day. You know what I'm saying? Right. In rotation on radio, on FM radio. Now these days with, with Spotify, Pandora, Apple Different. radio, it's a they, little different world. It's yeah, a different it, world. It, it is. You can add, they can play songs all the time. It just is never ending. But with mainstream radio, there's only so many songs that can be played in a day. So if you're playing this independent artist, Aaron Watson's song, but you're not playing this new artist who is on Carrie Underwood's label, well, a phone call's made and said, uh, yeah, at Mr. K W A T F M K Watt, you know, 99.9 er K Watt. Uh, yeah, I see that you're not playing our, our new artist song, but you're playing Aaron Watson, this independent artist. And you know, we're paying you big bucks yeah. to promote this Carrie Underwood concert that's coming to town. And this young we, artist is opening we sent, for her. We sent you to Cancun. We sent oh, yeah. you to, or whatever. Yeah, exactly. And for me, it's a big game. It's a, it's a, every song. I mean, they, they, it, if you put out a song to mainstream country music radio, you're going to spend a million dollars. Yeah. And for me, we had success. It helped us grow our brand nationwide. And I finally was like, I'm not going to chase that. I'm not going to chase okay. after that. I don't, I'm well, not, I don't, I don't want that. I just want to, yeah. I want to play rodeos, yeah. fairs, festivals. I want to make country music for the Cowboys, the Cowgirls, those people who still love country music that has the roots there. I've, I've, I've talked about this probably too many times. It's just a go-to topic with, uh, on this podcast, Ned Ledoux is yes. a friend. Chancey Ned. Williams is a friend. Those You're a guys. friend. Um, there it, it used to be, and to a lot of America success in the music world 
is about getting played on the radio. That moment when you hear my song on the radio, I have discovered and more people have discovered because of the world we live in with streaming services and more and more venues. Uh, it, success in the music world was defined by being on the radio. Yeah. I have discovered and more and more people are discovering success in the music world is playing shows, being there for the fans. There's yeah. a whole, there's a whole nother group of people that are successful musicians that you don't hear on the radio. And what I'm discovering in the country music world is, oh yeah, often they're not, they're the best ones. That's our yeah. music. That's what we want to listen to. Absolutely. You know, guys like Chansey, Ned, if it was 30 years ago, record labels would be all over them. Right. They're authentic. It's cowboy music. It's country music. It's got roots. It's soulful. Um, I think that still, and I don't have anything against Nashville. I've, right. I employ a lot of people in Nashville, actually. I employ them. <laughs> I employ Look them. You. I'm on the market. They work for me. me. If you got anything, if you got they, anything open. They work for me, actually. Hey, well, hey, by the, speaking of that, and let's get back to that. If you're looking for someone, I am in essence employed by Chancey Williams because any show of his I go to, yeah, I'm the guy that says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage. Uh, I introduce them at Did any you do a better job than what you just did right there? Because that was that was awful. You stuttered. Uh, yeah, I do a really good job. Okay, we we that's right. Okay. Because I got in trouble because I introduced them at pub station in Billings, Montana. And he said, I got a bigger applause than they did. <laughs> so that was, I might've got fired. But anyway. Sorry, Chancey. Yeah. Wham. Yeah. Wah, sorry. Wham. So anyway, you employ Nashville people. So well, not, I don't have sour grapes. Nashville. Yeah. I don't have sour grapes towards Nash Nashville, but the facts are the facts. There's only been three songs. There's only been three independent songs in like 50 years that have cracked the top 10 on mainstream top 40 country music radio one so of them's out fact. of style one of one's them's out of, out of style. style one was mine and then the second i did that they were like oh uh, yeah this kid has cracked the code and we need to oust That's him out of the system but the thing about it is is it's true they do control the narrative and they want people to think um well a, a successful artist is an artist that gets played on the radio and an artist that wins awards. Well, that's it's a those artists that win awards, they are very talented, but it is a very, very exclusive club. And unless you're part of the club, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many records you sell. If you're not part of that club, I mean, I hate to say it, but Chris Stapleton had to win a Grammy before country music even recognized him. And he's been a He's been one of the best artists in Nashville for decades now. And so that shows you he had to win a Grammy before anyone recognized him. And that's my thing. And I only say this for one reason alone. I don't need record labels. I don't need radio play. If they give it to me, I'm thankful. And anytime any radio station has a fundraiser or they need anything from me, I will always be there for them, but I don't, my career is not dependent upon their radio play or having a hit or winning awards. Um, and I only share that with you because there are so many artists out there that measure their success on whether they get played on mainstream radio or whether they get awards. If, if that is what you want, then unless you're one of those chosen few and you have to be willing to play that game and possibly be a pawn. Yeah. If you're willing to do that, then go that route. My deal is this. I have buddies who have signed record deals and then they put out albums and they hardly write any of the songs that are on the album. Yeah. My late, I write basically 99% of my songs because that's my passion. So for some guys, they're not writers and it's not a big deal. Sure, for yeah. me personally, 
I cannot imagine putting out an album where I only wrote one of the songs. I've seen where you're quoted as saying, I, I believe, I'll paraphrase, where you say, I prefer to be called a songwriter rather Absolutely. than a singer. Absolutely. And that's where it's at. That's where the, it comes from here. That I'll, you sing it because you own it. You know, it's like, man, you can listen to my songs and you can know what I was going through that day. You can like, man, his wife must have been pissed at him that day. You can just, you can, it's a window. It's a window into what I've been going through. I mean, we just finished, we finished a song. We finished an album. It's going to come out later this year. It's called Unwanted Man. And there's a song on there that I started writing 15 years ago. And it's called The Old Man Said. And there was an old man that I was friends with in college, kind of like a granddaddy figure to me. His name was Pete Pugh, Mr. Pete. And he and his wife, Miss Dorothy, would always cook me breakfast before I'd go to class. And Mr. Pete passed away the day before my oldest son was born. A week before he passed away, it was on a Sunday. He called me up and he was already at home in the, the last stages, hospice was all that stuff was set up. And uh, he called me up and he said, Aaron, do you think you could come over for one last cup of coffee? And I said, yes, sir. And I drove over there and uh, he sat up on the side of the bed and we sat there and we drank coffee. And I'm telling you, he sat there and shared with me everything he knew about being a good dad because he knew I was fixing to become a father. Man, I'm telling you, I cried so hard like on the way home, I had to pull over on the side of the road because I couldn't see straight. And I went home and I wrote down all the things that that old man told me. The old man said. And finally, uh, I was able to put it into a song. And that song is so important to me. And my thing is, I don't, I'm not going to send it to radio because they don't have the right to take something that is so special to me and decide not to play it. I'm not going to allow them to do that. That song, that, that's how I, that is my art and that's my passion. And if I were to send that song to someone, to a, to a program director and they shoot it down and insult it, I'm telling you, that's the kind of thing that's going to make me want to drive over to their place and knock on their door and say, say that to my face because it's personal. You know, it's like, don't talk about my mama kind of personal. And so for me, you know, that's the kind of stuff that uh, the songwriting, the songwriters are the guys that make me go, oh man, oh, oh, you know, Ned was telling me about a song. Um, he found some song lyrics from his dad and he finished the song. And that just blows my yeah. mind. And that makes me happy because I'm like, you know, because I, I had this talk with Ned. It's It was several years ago. You know, he was still kind of playing drums yeah. and he'd get up and he would sing one or two songs. And I remember I was like, bro, you need to be singing every song. And I said, you know, as a dad with sons, man, country music is the Ledoux family business. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I bet, I bet that just makes Chris, Chris is looking down from heaven so proud. I mean, I know I, I would be if one of my boys mm -hmm. after I'm gone is, is, is takes, takes Which up the family business. He will. The one yeah. playing the guitar, Jake. Yeah. 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 They're already, both. hey, both of them already are like, hey, dad. When you die, do I get that guitar and that gun? And I'm like, whoa. So I've told the boys whoa. this. You'll you'll I'm love 40, this. I'm 40. What are you, 49? I'm like 43. 44. I'm like, I'm like, come on, I'm 43 years old. I'm like, look at this. I got a lot of hair left to lose. Come on. Now their sister's working on it. That is a mop. I need to put my hat on. Um, 
I've told the boys this though, when they're asking about who's going to get what gun or what guitar, I'm like, boys, everything is being given to your little sister and she will decide uh -huh. who gets what. So if you're mean to your uh, little sister, <laughs> good, well, good blackmail. Yeah. That's extortion. Luck, it is. Uh, <clears throat> but music is it. And you talk about Ned with, you know, Ned, he and I talked about this in going through grief. You know, Ned's been through it as bad as anybody. Uh, but, but music is it. And, and I brought this up to him. I remember seeing in, in both my grandparents, my grandma and my grandpa, the funeral. You yeah. cry your eyes out, but when you get up to sing, it's a different outlet and you can get yeah. through it because yeah. it's tapping into something else. Music is all of, we, we all have music. Yeah. Even, the, even people that don't claim to not care about music, they latch onto it at different times. It gives yeah. us an outlet for grief, an outlet for joy, an outlet for love, yeah. heart, heartbreak, all of it. It's yeah. what we all have in common I latch on to it every day. I yeah. put in a different song and latch on to it. Absolutely. And you know, that's, I think, the new phase of my career as I've kind of branched away from chasing after that. And I've never measured my success by radio play. I've, I've always, I don't know. I think it's probably be, probably because of where I came from, you know, my dad being a disabled veteran and also being a custodian. Mm -hmm. I've never really measured success by like money or awards. I'm just not wired like that, but I've kind of made my mind up that, you know, like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? And I was like, you know what? I want to make music that has meaning music that's whether that's music that brings people joy just a fun song or songs that people can listen to that give them hope through a hard time um and that's really i've really shifted shifted gears a little bit and i i, I feel like some of my music in the past has done that like you know we you and i've talked about july and cheyenne you know that was the first song i wrote after we lost our little girl julia and that helped me. I wrote that song for obviously Miss Elsie Frost and Clyde. And just because Elsie sharing her heartache of losing her son and also sharing the fact that, you know, I love when she's like, you know, Lane was a world champion bull rider, but his greatest achievement came when he... <clears throat> asked Jesus to be his Lord and Savior. And when I saw Elsie use her heartache yeah. to inspire others, I was like. I, I need to tell you something <clears throat> on that line. Uh, one of my guests recently on this podcast was Will Kane. Yeah. Uh, he's now with Fox News. He's on ESPN Radio. He, he talked about, he said, Flynn, I got to tell you, when I was a college, a guy in college at University of Texas, a lot of us, we weren't really cowboys, but. The movie Eight Seconds changed us all. He said, did that do that for rodeo? He was questioning me. Yeah. And we talked about it. And I said, the biggest regret of that movie that Elsie Frost had, and I got this from you, was yeah. that it did not cover how Lane Frost was a man of God, a man yeah. of Jesus. Yeah. And I got that from you. And I hope that's yeah. okay. It is. But it, it was is okay. something that was missed. Yeah. It was. And Elsie told me that. Mm -hmm. She told me that that they were thankful for the movie that it opened up a bunch of doors and it has allowed Lane's name to be even bigger than it was, which she said has allowed her to share Lane's story that, you know, a year before he died, he asked Jesus to be his Lord and savior. And, um, you know, that there, there, there've been, so she, she, but, but I remember her saying that's one of the disappointments of that movie is it didn't, you know, they, they obviously put, you know, Hollywood, the Hollywood yeah, spin completely. on it, but yeah. you know, music is one of those things that it gives, uh, it gives you an outlet. And I'm like, you know what, when it's all said and done, 
I mean, if you're not doing it for the right reasons, you're not doing it to lift others up. I mean, what's it really matter? You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh -huh. you, what good, you know, what, 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 you know, what good's being lonely in a mansion, you know? Right. I have thrown out the quote, even on social media. I've typed it out. I've said it. I, I've thrown out the quote. It's one of my all time. Well, it's, it's my favorite song of yours, but Hey, pack light and love heavy. Give it all yeah. your heart and soul. So in the end, you don't regret one thing. Yeah. Life is like blue bonnets, blue bonnets in the in spring. The spring. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I, on my way out here today, I, I drove out about a 20 minute drive. I was on the, the phone with my brother, whose name is yeah. Pete. Yeah. And I said, I headed out to do a podcast with Aaron Watson. Ah, uh, said, let him know we're all like blue bonnets in the spring. And he's not a big music guy. Yeah. And that's his, that was his go-to when I said Aaron Watson that triggered. Yeah. That meaningful song to him. And, you know, for me as a songwriter, like I've never really won any big awards for that kind of stuff. But, but then again, how do you measure success? success. How, what is it an award? Is it something that people give you? Is it some brass trophy that glorifies you on a stage? Or is the real award when someone comes up to you and says, hey, I love your song, Blue Bonnets. It has helped get me through the toughest time of my life. Now that's a real award. You can't put it on a shelf, but and millions and millions of people won't know about it. It's not going to increase your record sales, but those are the kind of things that you're like, man, these are the kind of things that are meaningful, you know, and, uh, those are the kind of things that I've, that I just have always enjoyed that, that mm. I don't, I don't, I don't get to, you know, me, I'm not too impressed with me. You know, I don't look at, Oh my the, gosh. I know. Hey, I don't look at, hey, uh. I don't look at this, but Hey, I don't look at me in the morning and go, God, you're handsome. I look at myself. You don't? Go, no, I look at myself and I'm like, you're the most incredibly average. Can I say best. dorky? You're dorky. dorky. You're dorky. Oh, you know what my boys said? They're mad that they're not taller. And they're like, why am I, dad, why are we, I go, why are you, why are you not taller? I said, well, it's your mother's fault. And they said, why? Because she's short. I said, no, because she chose a small bull. <laughs> But boy, she I tell didn't you, breed hey, to the right bull. Hey, great, great but I couch. tell you what, I'm over there. Hey, boy, I was <laughs> over there. You know, it's like Jerry Clower said, you know, it's something about that joke about, you ever hear Jerry Clower's joke about the bull? Oh, let me tell you. So, so Jerry Clower, so there's these three Here bulls. Go. Here we there's, go. There's these three bulls out in the field and they're talking to each other. And they said, hey, did you hear the old ranchers bringing in one of those big Brahma bulls? And one of the bulls says, well, man, I got about 40 cows and I ain't gonna let him touch one of them. And then the next bull says, well, I ain't got about, about 20 cows and I ain't sharing none of my cows with him. And then the little bull at the end said, man, I ain't got but even one cow that even will look at me. He said, and I ain't sure enough sharing that one with him. Well, that bull, that truck backs up. You hear those air brakes. And that door comes down. And that bull's so big that it doesn't, doesn't even go through the gate. It just steps over that fence. It's just like, whoa, whoa. And it's huge. And oh, hey, smoke coming out of its nostrils and slobbering everywhere. Huge ripped up bull. And that one bull on the end, he said, you know, I got to thinking that was selfish of me to say, I'm not going to share none of my 40 cows. I'll let him have some of them. And then the next one said, you know what? That's right. You know what? I'm going to share some of my cows with him too. And the little bull, he's over there just, rah, rah. and they look, the other two bulls looked at him and said, man, what are you doing? That thing will kill you. 
He says, man, I just need to make sure that that thing knows that I am a bull and not a cow. I hope you get that. I hope you got that. You get it? Uh, Do you get it? I'm a bull. I'm, I'm a, a bull. bull. Whoa, bro. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa, Mr. Bull. I'm a bull. Hold up. Okay, for all y'all that didn't get the joke, uh, uh, look up, look up the bull, Jerry Clower. Man, your timing and delivery is fabulous. I do, I got to give you credit. Nice job, Logan. He, yeah, good job. <laughs> is Logan talking smack? No, he's laughing. That's why, yeah, my guy, it's, you, you won makeup, the room. You read the room. You put on well. your makeup this morning? Did I? No, did Logan. Did Logan, yeah. A little bit. Logan, it looks great. <laughs> He's a little shiny. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I, and not, I'll change gears a little. You brought up something earlier and I made a yeah. mental note um, about people can, it's a window. Music's a window. And yeah. that's why it means something to write the songs because they can see what you're going through. And I've had people comment to me like, hey, I know in the last couple of years, things have been different by the way you present things in the arena. I think people look at a guy like you in my field. Uh, mm -hmm. I've been successful, very successful I, in, in what I do. You're successful in your field. I think a lot of times people look at public success as perfection personally as well. Yeah. And that you and I know, mm -hmm. you know, I've been through a family breaking up. I've been through depression, different things. Yeah. It, it, we all need an outlet and that place to go when our personal life is not good either. Yeah. It, oh, it yeah. doesn't, it isn't equal Pu no. public success, personal success, not mm -hmm. always hand in hand at all. No, no. And we also live in a world where everything you put on Instagram or Facebook is you put your best sides. Yeah. And I mean, I always say, I mean, I always let people know, you know, it's, you know, it's that everything that glitters isn't gold. And let me just tell you, there's not much gold out there. Yeah. There's a lot of, in today's world on social media, it's all glitter and no gold. Mm -hmm. If, you know, I always figure if you got to tell everybody, they, the person that posts every day on social media that they're living their best life isn't living their best life. No, if they put it out there every day. No way. You know, I, I struggle with social media cause all, all the time, like good things are good things will be happening. And I forget to video it because I'm just enjoying it with my enjoying eyes. It. Just take it in. Just yeah. lo love that person between you take in this event with, you know, my girls right now are, in town. I don't see him as much as I'd like to live a yeah. couple hours away. I haven't taken any pictures cause I just am embracing it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of embracing something we love and this came up earlier, there is nothing through all of this, through all of this last year, we as doing what we do and being on stage, there's nothing like walking out on a stage or into an arena in front of thousands of people sitting next to people they don't know. Oh yeah. Hearing man, if you know, you know. Oh yeah. If you have it, if you need it, you know. Yeah. You're a, you great. Your albums are great. Your everything's great. But I know being friends with you all these years, standing backstage at the South Point or wherever wherever we've been. Yeah. You know, when you, I, I've seen you backstage when you don't feel very good. You've been yeah. sick. Things are. Yeah. When you walk out there, just like that. Yeah. You're ready to go. Feels, fills you up, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. And you feed off, you feed off of people. You know, there's times, golly, those South Point shows, man, those are a mother bear, especially after about, I mean, you know, yeah. They're at midnight. midnight. It's a midnight show. Yeah, I'm I start at people, midnight. I don't start till 2 a.m. Texas time. Right. I mean, and 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 golly, I'll be sitting back there going, I would give anything 
to go to bed right now. Almost delirious. It. You know, you're just delirious, but then I'll hit that stage and those people are excited and you just feed off of their energy and, uh, and you forget about it's that adrenaline rush. You forget that you're tired and you just get out there. The other thing is you don't want to let them down. Yeah. You realize, Oh, wow. You came. I, see yeah. You. Exactly. You see me. Yeah. Exactly. And it's, it's like, Oh, well, let's, let's send them home with a smile, you know, and it, then it becomes personal. And, um, but I'm the same way. I mean, I, you know, I love, I, you know, watching you do your thing. I mean, just, you got to remember, it's like, uh, these people are spending their hard earned money. Mm -hmm. This is their entertainment. This is their vacation. Not, you know, like growing up, I, we never went on vacations. We yeah. didn't have enough money, but little moments like that, getting to go to rodeos, you know, getting to go to the fair, Man, that was like, that was big stuff for us growing up. We looked forward to that all year long. So it's like, you know, when you got people in stitches, they're laughing so hard and just bringing them enjoyment. And, you know, it's just. Well, you know what? You, you, you try to not forget these people don't care that I did this two nights ago, 2000 miles away. And I flew here and I haven't slept. Come on. Yeah. Understand. No, you got to say they don't know. They don't yeah, care. No. Yeah. You're in, you're performing in wherever and they paid money. It, and it yeah. is hard sometimes. It is, it is. It is hard. I always think about, you know, I love baseball yeah. and I always think, oh man, I did this last night. I already did this. And I'm like, dude, the fans never get tired of a home run. Mm -hmm. So you might as well get up there and just swing for the fence every night. Give them what they paid for. And you know what I, my example of, uh, well, I don't want to do this bit or this because I've done it so much. I don't want the crowd to get tired of it. And then I, my, my analogy is, man, I'll bet Billy Joel gets tired of singing piano, man. But by God, if I go to his concert, I want to hear piano, man. That That's is exactly right. That is the thing where we, as entertainers, you kind of mess with your mind. You think, ah, they don't want to hear this again. Yes. Yes. I do that all the time, especially if we're playing, like we played a bunch of shows back to back and I had a, uh, a girl come to both shows and I said, gosh, I said, I feel bad. You bought tickets to both shows. I said, I played basically the same show twice. I said, I know I changed it up a little. She's like, oh, I don't care. I'd listen to those. I, I'd, I'd, I'd listen to those songs a hundred times over. I, I just, and I was like, Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine, can you imagine going to Billy Joel and going, he didn't, he didn't yeah. sing piano. I went to a, I had never seen Bon Jovi and I was just like, they were in Calgary and I was working the Calgary stampede. Yeah. Where you've been. And, uh, uh, he go, they go through their whole show. Why am I at a Bon Jovi concert? Well, for one, because it's Bon Jovi. It's Bon Jovi. Because I want to hear my favorite song of all time. Yeah. Dead or Alive. Yeah. I'm a cowboy on a studio. Yeah. You know, they go through the concert. They walk off stage. I'm like, hey, they didn't sing Dead or Alive. Well, they came back out for an encore and sang it. But I'm like, you can't say, you can't do that to me. Yeah, you, you gave me uh, a, a, uh, <laughs> Oh, God. So yeah. Why, John? Why, John? John? John, he went from, John Bon Jovi went, I discovered being at his concert. He went from the big hair, hairy chest. Mm, yeah. You give love a bad name to a middle-aged guy in black jeans and sketchers. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. Yeah. It's, Still it's great. Real, Still it's great. Real crazy. Still you great. Know, but I yeah. will hear artists. I will hear artists talk about how much they hate playing the song and that they don't want to play it. And I want to walk up to them. They don't want to play their hits. You know, they don't, they despise it. I want to walk up to them and I want to smack them right in the face. <laughs> I want to smack them in the face. You know why? I want to say, shut your mouth and play those hits that you've been blessed with. 
be thankful that you have hits because of those three or four songs that you hate and you don't want to play. That's why that arena is full of people. So you know what? Play some of your artsy fartsy stuff. Be an <laughs> artist. I get it. I'm artsy fartsy. Yeah. But like, you know what? Play the other songs. And you know what? God forbid you have to work. You know, it's like, hey. I know from experience, let me tell you, <laughs> when, when, when dad and I were cleaning, I didn't mind the vacuum cleaner mm -hmm. and I didn't mind cleaning glass windows and the glass doors. I didn't mind that at all. I actually like the smell of that glass, you know, the, that foam Oh yeah. It smells nice. Yeah. And, but let me tell you, <laughs> I did not like cleaning toilets. Mm -hmm. And you know what? In life, sometimes, sometimes you got to gotta clean. clean the toilet. Yeah. You got to clean the toilet. Like and so <laughs> I don't cry much about stuff like that. I, I'm just, yeah. Hey, hey I will tell you, I'll tell you okay. something crazy. We played a, we played a private show last night. Uh, uh, a fundraiser for the, the uh, country music hall of fame. We played it at this guy's house in, um, in Dallas and his collection of just memorabilia was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. He had everything from like church, John Wayne, Warren movies. Um, he had the, uh, what, um, uh, who, who was all in the man who shot Liberty Valance? John Wayne and uh, 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 you got me, Jimmy. Uh, was Jimmy Stewart? Jimmy Stewart, he has the suit that Jimmy Stewart wore, like owns it, right? Yeah, but here's the crazy oh, he had you know, John Wesley Harden, the, the, the outlaw, whenever he'd shoot someone, he'd take out a uh, a, a, a card from a deck of cards that he had been shooting for practice. It had two bullet holes through it. He'd write the date and lay it on the dead dude's chest. Okay. That guy has some of those, <laughs> those cards, but here's the crazy thing he has. He has the actual jacket that doc holiday wore at the gunfight at the, at OK, the OK corral. Corral. He owns the jacket. And I was like, that is the coolest thing ever. It had been verified by Doc's wife, common law wife, you know, big nose Kate. Uh, <laughs> and I was uh, like, that is cool. How cool is that, man? Uh, little oh little food for thought. That is cool. Um, Cheyenne, the couple months from now. I'm going to show up. I uh, got a day off. We're going to load up and drive down because the PBR is the next night. You uh -huh. and Cody Johnson. By the way, I was thinking before we did this, I mean, before I let you go, Cody Johnson and you have been loyal it, 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 with the exception of a, a couple of years here and there where things were going on. And Cody now, you know, he's busy. He's busy. So busy. But what would you two, where would your guys' careers, both of you, been without outside the barrel with Flint Rasmussen in Vegas. I mean, you yeah. you can trace it back. You, you can trace, trace it back. back. I know. can't speak on behalf of Cody, but you know, it was like the equivalent of being on on your show. It's the equivalent of one of those pop artists being on Oprah. You're kind of my Oprah. Johnny Carson back in my day. I'm your Oprah. You're, You're more like my Oprah. You get a car. You get a car. You get You get a car. You, you know what when people are like, what do you think of Flint? I'm like, he's my Oprah. That's a t-shirt. <laughs> Bam. He's my Oprah. <laughs> but you know what? Seriously, Cody. Cody came on my show and nobody knew who he was. He was a former bull rider trying to make. It. Yeah. You were on my show and you had been around. I knew Aaron Watson. Yeah. Been, both of you, but you, you've been loyal. I just, I appreciate, seriously, I appreciate your friendship 
whenever I see you, because we do talk about family, we do oh, talk dude. about what we're going through. And Aaron, all these years, I just appreciate it. I do. Well, man, I appreciate you too. It's, it's, it's you and I've got that. We got that, that personality and that relationship where me and you, we may not see each other like for months. And then when we see each other. It's like, ah, you know, it's like, ah, bro. Oh, it's bro, just fun, dude. Bro, bro, yeah. bro, bro. You know, uh, shoot. Where no. did I introduce you one time? I introduced you somewhere as, as Flick Robitussin. Flick Robitussin. Where was that? Where was that? I that is a great, I made that I up out of nowhere. You're just bam, comedy genius. Comedy genius. Y'all give it and up I, for my friend Flick Robitussin. And I still have the picture. That's right. I had, <laughs> it has a fold. I had folded it to fit it somewhere. But it's yeah. still there. It's still it's all, there. Now, if it was folded up a bunch of ways and you're like, I keep this in my front pocket, I'd be like, dude, that's far enough. That's right. Because you know what? Aaron Watson and Flint Rasmussen are never, right. going, we're never going out of style. Never going out of style. That's right. Aaron, you're the best, my friend. Dude, Good luck. You, bro. Good luck for the next couple months until I see you in July in Cheyenne. Absolutely. Hey, I'm fixing to text you right now. My phone's on the bus. <laughs> it's going to go on the bus uh, text you right now. Send me, a, send me a selfie. I'll send you a selfie. No. A post-show post selfie. You're the best. Hey. Aaron, Aaron Watson, you'll everybody. Be, you'll always be my Oprah. And you'll be my A.A. <laughs> Ron. <laughs> my a -A -A Ron. Love Thanks, you, bro. Hey, go the see the girls. Tell the girls I said to uh, ride fast and don't break barriers. Doesn't that go against what women are? Whatever. We yeah, get it. I'm with we you. We get it. We you. get it, bro. Thanks, Love you, buddy. bro. Love you, man. Appreciate you. All right. Take care, partner.